It's such an unsettling and terrifying bit of news for someone to receive they have a cancer diagnosis. And essentially what patients lack is confidence, you know, the idea that they actually could sort of regain control, you know, and actually be back in the driver's seat. You know, with these new treatments, especially in melanoma, it's really flipped the script in a way where you can walk in the door, you know, and meet a patient, orient them to the, you know, the danger of their situation, but then be able to communicate confidence that you actually have treatments, multiple, that again, not just can buy them time, but really uh, essentially indefinite time in a way that just, you know, feels so fundamentally different than, than where we were in a disease like melanoma just a few years ago. And in so many different cancer types, we have those leapfrog moments happening where, you know, this really difficult to treat cancer for which there was not effective therapy now becomes an imminently treatable. Melanoma is a unique disease compared to um, any other common cancers in that it affects so many young people. And that really does add a layer of intensity to taking care of patients in that scenario, people who haven't really had a chance yet to live a full life, people who are right in the midst, um, raising young kids. You know, having taken care of patients my whole career who are exactly my age and same stage of life is, is one of the ways that really makes it easy to take it personally in terms of you know, what, what these patients are up against and uh, the primary motivator of, of why to keep jumping out of bed at five in the morning and, and getting going uh, down this path. Basically, what we used to call a diagnosis of cancer meant that you tried to understand where it came from. So melanoma being skin cancer, you know, breast cancer, lung cancer, and so on. And there might be a little bit more description beyond that in terms of you know, a type of one of those cancers. So basically, taking that history into the modern era where we have so much more scientific insight in terms of the genetic and molecular underpinnings of cancer. We've seen this revolution building where taking that molecular understanding of cancer and turning it into treatments and very specific treatments that are, you know, basically tailored to that individual patient and their cancer and what makes their cancer tick. Um, that's the broad proposition of what targeted therapy is all about. Usually my day is, you know, booked up from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m with you know, something happening at, at every one of those time slots, if not two things happening at one of those time slots. And so multitasking is definitely something that uh, I'm, I'm forced to embrace. Developing cancer therapies uh, is a team sport, flat out. And it really requires a lot of communication to others outside of the walls of my own institution. And oftentimes, you know, to sort of build and maintain those relationships, it requires, you know, face time visiting institutions, giving lectures, meeting one-on-one -on -one, uh, you know, with key stakeholders, talking about the pressure points, the areas of, the, you know, of a new program that are weak and need strengthening, what are the ones that are really uh, you know, most compelling. So many people that our patients never meet, you know, we've got the world's greatest scientists and scientific firepower, and being a medical oncologist, I get to stand kind of in front of that effort in a way, always meeting and dialoguing and try to reduce it down to you know, a treatment for that person. It's a pretty in inspiring job description. I started wearing bow ties right at the beginning of my medical career, although I only put it on when I'm ready to see patients. They're the ones who I get dressed up for, figure that my colleagues don't need it so much, and it actually allows me to kind of uh, switch roles, you know, in a way where, I'm, you know, when I'm sort of going into patient care mode, you know, kind of you know, putting on the uniform, if you will. Really the sort of preciousness of life that I've learned from my patients. Having young patients uh, with melanoma forces you to kind of, you know, when you walk in the door at home, look at things very differently in terms of uh, living for the day and, and, and kind of leaving nothing until later life or um, you know, deferring, you know, any aspect of, uh, of your priorities. My name is Keith Flaherty. I'm a medical oncologist at Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center.